It's time for bookkeeping, beer, and BS. So the so the brewing industry went on this trajectory. Mm-hmm. My observation was it was everybody drank you know their normal light beers, and then they came out with the the fruity mm-hmm. beers and the the bitch ices, and then micro brewing kind of came about, and so breweries took off. My my I want to like continue on with this with this trajectory of where the hell this industry is going, but. Mm. Is, is the brewery industry saturated? Like, I feel like now I'm starting to see breweries closing and and I don't know if it's like a COVID thing or, a you know, whatever it is, but it feels saturated from a, you know, from a normal beer drinking dude's perspective, but I don't know. Well, I have lots of opinions there. It, it, it's- That's the best part about this show. Uh, nobody's going to hold us accountable. Yeah, it's on the internet, but don't worry about it. Uh, so, so there's a couple of things. For our business, so when we started in 2002, we were probably 70, 80% alcohol. Beer, you know, the the bitch ices, whatever you call them, right? Like all of the flavored malt beverages, that was our jam, right? And 20% of our business was not, it was not alcoholic. And then the energy drink shift happened in 2008, 2009. And that's when Celsius, Killcliffe is one of our clients. Like that's, and what's up, what do we call it now? Like a pre-workout and a post-workout? Like. Those words didn't yeah, exist. I, I drink coffee. That's my pre-workout. And then yeah. I drink a lot of water. That's my post-workout. Because I'm like, shit, I should have drank more water today. Yeah. yeah. So then, so we switched that. So then we went kind of 30% alcohol, 70% non-alc. And then- Oh, really? That big yeah, of a switch? That big of a switch. Wow. Then the recession hit, right? In 2009-ish, or whatever. And then we went to store brands. So people downgraded their drinking, right? Like you- no one gives up drinking a beer right at the you end of the day. Right. You got that right. But they're going to drink it at a different price point. So you might not buy the $16.99 four pack of beer. You're going to maybe stop at Trader Joe's and buy their whatever. So we did a lot of store brands. We just did a lot of private labels. And then with the hard seltzer boom, we kind of went back to about 50 50. So it's cyclical, in my opinion. But okay. back to your question on breweries. Um, I don't think it is. I, I think there's room for more and it's it's niche, right? And and to me, even like the lab, the tap room itself doesn't, it competes against your, it competes against Gordy's, right? It competes against your local pub. Yeah. And where I'm actually surprised and maybe there's not leverage there, I'm actually surprised like the restaurant and bar association haven't tried to limit more brewery licenses because that's who the business is getting stolen from yeah yeah not necessarily the liquor store people people probably especially right now are drinking at home more than ever um or at least the last two years they were um but that makes sense it's like that's just taking somebody off of a bar stool over here and moving them to a bar stool over there and the like so the industry it's funny because like if you look at the graphs of what alcohol consumption looks like it, it it Ed, what we're actually seeing is beer is going down as a whole. So like mm-hmm. even Bud and things like that are going down as a whole. And RTD cocktails. So this is one of our clients, Long Drink. Mm-hmm. So it's a gin. So RTD cocktails is what's making the surge. RTD. Oh. Don't tell me. Ready to drink. Correct. 